you better get used to saying yes, ma'am. First, we need motive. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most powerful female characters on TV. For this list, we're focusing on the small screen women who hold a position of power, leaders who strongly wield their underlings, make tough calls, hold an influential role, and won't be taking any nonsense from, well, anyone. One thing is for sure. When all this is over, I'm gonna fire the sh** out of you. We're focusing on live-action characters here, so we won't have any ladies from animated shows on this list. Also, no superpowers, since this isn't a contest of physical strength. Number 10. Cookie Lion. Empire. You forgot about me the second you divorced me in there. You still owe me what's mine. When searching for respect, Cookie Lion only has one speed and that puts her past anyone in her way. After 17 years in prison to protect her family and investing the capital to get her ex-husband's multi-million dollar company started, Cookie knows some reverence to her is past due. I just want you to know, everything I did was for you and your brothers. I ended up where I ended up for you and your brothers. If she's walking through the Empire offices like she owns the place, a case can be made that she kind of does. Now. Let's talk business, shall we? Fiercely passionate with a short fuse, she'll go to any length to keep her family together. She's not a lady you're going to out-talk or out-fight anytime soon. Plus, I don't date boys half my age. You need to stay your tired ass away from my son. Number 9. Annalise Keating – How to Get Away with Murder Answer the question, Ms. Senator. Controlling courtrooms and making her criminal law students quake in fear, Annalise Keating is the defense attorney you want keeping you out of an orange jumpsuit. I am sorry, Senator, if you do not have the time to answer for who bore the real cost of your development. Objection! Though you'll probably have an easier time staying out of prison by not accepting her internship, since there's no dean's list for getting wrapped up in murder plots. Your Honor, the record shows that my client Rebecca Sutter did not impregnate Miss Dangard, nor did she take her to an abortion clinic with hopes of terminating said pregnancy, nor did she drive through three states to spend 20 minutes on a rooftop where Miss Dangard's body was found in a water tank. That warning aside, Keating is not only brilliant, but able to keep a clear head, for the most part, in the midst of her complicated relationships with seemingly everyone in her past. In a sea of TV lawyers, Annalise is a top candidate for our legal dream team. Look at me. I've seen how strong you can be. And that's the West I need for you to be right now, to help the others. Number 8. Liz Lemon, 30 Rock. I want to go to there. Would we want Liz Lemon's job? Not sure that we want to go to there. Liz's time as head writer of TGS with Tracy Jordan is hard to romanticize. Are you drunk? Yes. Her job seems to revolve around constantly quelling situations caused by the cast members' inflated showbiz egos or the writers' weird quirks. Not to mention having to answer to controlling executive Jack Donaghy. No, Jack, you would be proud of me. It's all part of a plan. It just got out of control. A plan to do what? Though when things get too out of hand, she seems to be the only one able to keep the show and everyone's job afloat. Liz Lemon's power is never in making things run smoothly. It's in despite of the odds making it work at all. You know what? Suck it, you wailing IHOP monkeys! I'm at the jet's waiting. That's right, a jet to New York City! Lemon out! Number 7. Captain Catherine Janeway, Star Trek Voyager. Gentlemen, welcome aboard Voyager. While other characters on our list wield office or political power, this is the only one running a frickin' starship. However, things don't start out smoothly for the captain, nor her crew. Ma'am is acceptable in a crunch, but I prefer captain. We're getting ready to leave. Let me show you to the bridge. After the Voyager becomes lost in uncharted space, Captain Janeway has to keep her people calm for a long journey back through the unknown. I'm really easy to get along with most of the time. But I don't like bullies, and I don't like threats, and I don't like you, Color. Meanwhile, maintaining her crew's sanity and safety, she stays a hard-nosed leader and scientist as she upholds Starfleet's ethical standards higher than all else. Plus, she still finds time to deal with all that hair in a bun, surely a battle within itself. Sometimes diplomacy requires a little saber rattling. Number 6. Mary Richards – The Mary Tyler Moore Show She did want that job for herself. I never would have believed she would be so sly, so cunning, so ambitious. Only Mary Richards could apply for a secretary job at a local TV station, then end up as an associate producer for the news instead, and as one of the few single career women on 70s television. Why did I get myself into this? Mary? You're nervous. Yeah, I am. Never remaining fully satisfied, she even tries out for an on-air editorial job, which sadly didn't work out. 
After five years of hard work, she still doesn't feel respected in her position and requests to be the newscast producer. What for? The set's fine. Leave it alone. Mr. Grant, I thought I was the producer. That's right, Mary. Well, then why don't you let me do my job? She immediately started making changes, and despite everyone's second-guessing, Mary delivers a solid broadcast, ultimately proving to herself she belongs in charge. It's Mary's perseverance, positivity, and ability to roll with the punches that made her influential. Here comes the good part! <laughs> Produced by Mary Richards. <laughs> <laughs> Number 5. Peggy Olsen, Mad Men See, this is why I don't like working with women. You have no sense of humor. You're fired. It was the 60s in a man's corporate world, where Peggy Olsen started at the bottom and fought up the ladder. That's what makes us notice Olsen's power, how far she had come, not just career-wise on Mad Men, but how her personality evolved. Hold on a second. You want me to work up an entire corporate image campaign for $10? I can make you do it for nothing. I'm the boss. You're right. The work is $10. The lie is extra. Once the office's timid, apologetic mouse she earned the respect of even Don Draper himself, which is not an easy journey. I don't know what was more miraculous, the technological achievement that put our species in a new perspective, or the fact that all of us were doing the same thing at the same time. And while we could argue Joan Holloway really runs that office, it's Peggy who breaks away from Joan's office political advice to achieve the job she truly wanted, by excelling instead of existing. That's nice to hear. Number 4. Olivia Pope, Scandal. And you are? Olivia Pope. When the leader of the free world needs a fixer, there's only one person he calls. After serving as the White House communications director for the president, Olivia Pope starts a crisis management firm. When did you decide to let them ruin you? Excuse me? She specializes in using her intelligence and motivational skills to clean up the public images of Washington, D.C.'s key players. Either or, because you can't have both, I'm not going to allow you to have both. He's not going to allow you to have both. So you can either cozy up to Melly or you can cozy up to Fitz. Choose Fitz and I'll protect you. I'll keep you on the ticket. I'll ensure your political future. Pope doesn't do herself many favors with her complicated relationships. Did we mention her affair with the commander-in-chief? Not to mention her family's secret dramas. But please, don't confuse the chaos for weakness. Olivia is not intimidated by the government's elite, especially bitch babies. The Cyrus Bean I know doesn't hide in his half-empty closet and wet his pants like a little bitch baby. And let's not forget about her flawless power suits. Miss Pope has got it handled. It's being handled. By who? Number three, Claire Underwood, House of Cards. If we can't show some respect for one brave man and still accomplish what we set out to do, then I'm disappointed in both of us. I should have never made you ambassador. That cold chill you might be feeling is probably coming off this entry, the modern-day Lady Macbeth of U.S. politics. Claire Underwood has had quite the career thus far, from lobbyist to second lady to first lady and finally to a U.N. ambassador. Well, this is too important, and you weren't going to negotiate with Secretary Durant. What makes you think I'll negotiate with you? <laughs> Well, isn't that why we're sitting here? Certainly one of the best resumes on our list. And she has come a long way into becoming a leader to the public. For three decades, I've stood by my husband's side because I know he stands up for people like you. Her personality is pretty cutthroat, sticking with husband at this point solely to keep images up and to achieve her long-term goals. We just hope one of these goals is increasing her humanity. I'm done trying to win over people's hearts. Let's attack their hearts. We can work with fear. Number 2. Selena Meyer, Veep I'm gonna have the IRS crawl so far up your husband's colon, he's gonna wish the only thing they find is more cancer. Being second in command to the country's top office is definitely noteworthy, though it may not have always felt that way to former Vice President Selena Meyer. You're gonna cancel this recount like Anne Frank's bat mitzvah. Her day-to-day -day affairs revolved around more trivial objectives, perhaps not worthy of her office. However, bidding her time, the president takes a leave of absence, and Meyer takes the opportunity to jump forward. I have just brokered a peace deal with Israel here. I, as president of the United States, have actually achieved something which is virtually unheard of. With heavy narcissism and a crass tongue, away from the press, of course, she gets to the presidency. What's really impressive, though, is to be so important you have your own personal aid bagman. 
Seriously, a guy that just handles your bag and verbal abuse, of course. I'm your calendar. I'm your Google. I'm your Wilson the Volleyball. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Not only are you coming back to the workplace fairly late, but you have some very prominent baggage. What's expected of me? No, I do not accept your resignations. And Jerry Dantana is not going to get one f***ing dollar. If I seem too passionate, it's because I care. And if I come on strong, it's because I feel strongly. And if I push too hard, it's because things aren't moving fast enough. Number one, Daenerys Targaryen, Game of Thrones. You liberated them. People learn to love their chains. Exiled from her kingdom and placed into a forced marriage, that should be the final coffin nail to a princess's legacy. But when talking about the mother of dragons, it's only the kick-ass beginning. After the death of her husband, Khal Drogo, Daenerys rallies what's left of the Dothraki horde to her following. Relying on her wit, her determination, and her dragons, she builds up an army of thousands from conquering city by city, freeing their slaves. And we can't stress this enough, but she has trained loyal friggin' dragons. Growing fast. Not fast enough. I can't wait that long. I need an army. And while Cersei Lannister shows time and time again her cunning grasp of power, it's the fairest shade of blonde that truly commands and earns the title of queen. Plus, Cersei doesn't have dragons. Tyrion Lannister. I name you Hand of the Queen. Do you agree with our list? Who do you think is the most powerful female character on TV? Now I told myself I'm gonna do something. And I'm gonna goddamn do it. For more commanding top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. I should have never made you president. What are you looking at?